I'd like to give a brief overview of the housing crisis that led to the recent market crash and one of the worst recessions this country has ever seen. The housing bubble and the crash that followed is perhaps one of the greatest examples of irrational behavior in the world of finance, at least in recent memory. And for those of you that are interested, there's a great book by Michael Lewis titled The Big Short that tracks the story of investors who sensed the crash was coming and made a lot of money with this information. So first, we'll look at how the housing bubble formed of historical housing prices going back to 1976. It is immediately apparent that prices rose significantly in the early 2000s, only to see a market decline beginning in 2006. This graph alone is enough to make one wonder what could cause such rapid increase in the price of homes. The answer, it turns out, is human irrationality. I won't get into an argument of whose fault it was for the bubble and consequently its burst. Instead, I'll just tell the story and allow you to draw the conclusions of where the blame lies. Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, mortgage application credit standards became increasingly lax, and people with less than ideal credit scores were allowed to purchase increasingly expensive homes. As a result, the rate at which people began buying homes also increased, and so to keep up with demand, more and more homes were being built. The increased purchasing and demand of homes naturally caused an increase in price of homes, and all of these factors began to reinforce one another. In the early 2000s, what are known as adjustable rate mortgages became increasingly popular. Adjustable rate mortgages were designed such that for the first few years after a home purchase, the home buyer would pay a very low introductory interest rate that would promptly rise to a more normal rate after the introductory time period was up. With such low mortgage payments, many people felt wealthy and began spending and buying a lot. Things got to such a point that people were buying second or third or even fourth homes, counting on the fact that in a few years the value of the house would rise and they could sell it to someone else. And for some people this worked splendidly. But then those attractively low introductory rates began to expire and suddenly people could no longer afford their mortgage payments. Just like in the demand for houses dried up, there were more people looking to sell their homes than to buy one. Housing prices were now rapidly falling as less and less people had the money to buy a third or second or even a first home. This would go on to be called the housing bubble and its burst sent ripples through the rest of the economy. After all, if people couldn't afford their mortgage payments, how could they afford to buy anything else? To make matters worse, there was a great deal of money invested in housing mortgages. When homeowners could no longer pay their mortgage, the investments in mortgages went bad and many funds lost a great deal of money, leading to a market crash. I bring up the story of housing crisis because it's a perfect example of how bubbles form in the stock market. Almost the exact same thing applies in a stock market bubble. That is, as people feel wealthier and more confident, they are more willing to spend more money. And this lax attitude allows prices to rise very high and very quickly. Eventually, these bubbles burst and those who bought at the peak or waited too long to sell are the most affected. Don't allow yourself to be caught in a bubble. Force yourself to take a step back from time to time and think about what you're buying and why. As silly as it sounds, you might actually have been motivated by peer pressure when you make a decision and not even realize it. And in the financial world, it is extremely important to make logical, thought out decisions rather than simply following the herd mentality. All it takes is one small shock to scare the herd into running the other way.